Hello guys, welcome to another video from Kingfish Battle Crew. Of course, today we are doing this very nice flight simulator game called Flightline on Roblox. Now, this is a type of game that is unique to every other games or every other flight simulators on Roblox because mostly this game obeys the laws of physics more and it's more realistic. And most people don't know how to actually play this game and uh, rather they don't know how to actually land a plane because it is actually the hardest in this game. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So for this tutorial, I will be using a Boeing 757 passenger jet. For any of the beginners, however, I recommend you use a short haul airplane because it is a lot easier to use, it is a lot easier to control. After you are done selecting your plane, it will take you to the spawn menu where you can spawn at any gates. Now, since I'm a Boeing 757, I am a medium haul airplane, so that means I can spawn on medium or large gates. After you have spawned in your plane, it is recommended that you get used to the advanced controls and hotkeys. Simply press and hold the space button to open up the quick action menu. There you will find all sorts of controls. For takeoff, you set your flaps to 10 or 15 degrees, depending on your aircraft type. Higher flap settings will be used during landing. You can also start your engines by pressing the start buttons on engines 1 and 2. And please do not start your engines on the jetway like what I just did right here. You can also simply start the engines by pressing E on your keyboard. You can also access the controls and hotkeys at the top of the screen right next to the altimeter. Note that spoilers are not on every plane, so they would show up as NA on the spoiler controls. Some planes do have reverse thrusters, but all planes have brakes, so you can utilize it when you land. After you have set your flaps to 10 or 15, you would want to push back. Press V to push your aircraft away from the jetway. Another important feature I would like to point out is the camera modes at the bottom right. I much rather prefer mount camera over chase camera as it is static with the plane. If you are willing to challenge yourself, try cockpit mode. Left click anywhere to enter steer mode. You can tell that you're in steering mode by the crosshair at the middle of the screen. The whole game is fully mouse control. Point your mouse to the left to turn left, and point your mouse to the right to turn right. Point your mouse up to ascend, and down to descend. Controls are kind of simple. Left click anywhere again to go back to cursor mode. Make sure you have turned on your navigation and strobe lights, as this will make your plane visible to others. Since this is a tutorial, I will pretend that I am by myself and all airports are uncontrolled. And now we are all set for departure. All we have to do is to taxi to the runway. Press and hold W until your engine meter hits just under the red line. Your engines will throttle up and your aircraft will start moving forward. On airport tarmacs, your speed should go no higher than 30 knots. Press and hold S to adjust your engine throttle to maintain about a 25 knot speed on a tarmac. That's just my preferred speed on every airport. And steer accordingly towards the runway. If there is an air traffic control, they will and may direct you to a different runway for takeoff. We are taxiing to runway 04 since that is the nearest runway from our gate. Ahead of the aircraft, you will see a yellow line that crosses the taxiway. That is called a hold short line. If the air traffic control was active and asked you to hold short on a runway, just stop your plane behind that line until ATC gives you clearance to line up and wait or take off on the runway. In this case, if the ATC commanded me to hold short on runway 04, I would stop just behind that yellow line close to runway 04. You can easily identify the runway numbers by looking at the ground of one end of the runway. Each runway will always have two runway numbers. Once you have identified one runway number, you can subtract or add 18, so long as the numbers are from 1 to 36. Since this is runway 4, then I know the other end of the runway is runway 22. Runway numbers 
will become very useful when landing planes, which I will show you when I land this plane later in this video. Taxi and line up with the runway in preparation for takeoff. If the ATC commands you to line up and wait on a runway, just line up onto the runway and do not take off until clearance has been given. Once ATC has given you clearance to take off, you may put your throttles to full and ascend to a safe altitude. Very importantly, watch the crosswinds. This will heavily affect your plane and it may push you off course when you take off. Put your gear up and turn towards the airport you are going towards. After a short while being up in the air, or immediately after takeoff, you should preferably put your flaps to zero. Since flying with manual controls over long distances can be unreliable, there is an autopilot feature integrated in the quick action menu. Click on the heading and set your heading accordingly. 360 is north, 090 is east, 180 is south, and 270 is west. Don't be like me where I activated the autopilot first before setting my heading. Since the airport I'm going to is northwest of me, I'll set my heading somewhere between 270 and 360. Do know when autopilot is engaged, that you cannot steer this aircraft in steering mode. At the middle of the screen, just under the engine meter, you'll find several black dots in a cross formation. Click on that to set your airport and ILS to the airport's runway you are landing on. Since runway 9 right is the longest runway, I will select and land on that runway. ILS is short for Instrumental Landing System. It is a very useful system that can help you land your plane, which I will show you later in this video. The numbers on a vertical line tell you the distance towards the runway line. If it is increasing, you are getting further from lining up with the runway. If it is decreasing, then you are getting closer to lining up with the runway. The horizontal line will not show up until you have gotten behind the runway, which is used to show if your altitude is too high or too low for landing. Now that we are behind the runway, you can see the horizontal line. Of course, it is indicating that we're too high because we just passed over the airport. Now for the landing preparation. Throttle down a bit to slow your aircraft down. Next, we will enter the downwind leg for that runway. A downwind leg is when you go the opposite direction of the runway. And this is when runway numbers get really useful. When you are landing on runway 9 right or left, your heading will always be around 090. And when you land on runway 27, your heading will always be around 270. And notice when I took off on runway 4 of Wellensall Square Airport that my heading was 040. This is when runway numbers are useful. Since we have established ILS with runway 9 right, I have to enter the downwind leg, so I set my heading to 270, opposite of the heading of the runway, and decrease the altitude to 8000. After a short while, if you are confident that you are far enough where you can make a landing, enter the base leg. Base leg is defined as a short descending flight path at right angles to the approach and extended center line of the landing runway. Since the runway I'm landing on is to my left, I turned my plane left heading 180. Shortly afterwards, however, you will have to fly straight into the runway and this is where you set your heading towards the runway you are landing on.
I set my heading to 090 and have my plane turn for me. Autopilot will start becoming unreliable as soon as you enter the base lane. It is best you disengage them and turn towards the runway manually. Since I made my plane turn too early, I disengaged the autopilot once the plane stopped turning and begin to make my correction. Begin lining the vertical and horizontal line of the ILS towards the center of the black dotted lines. This will ensure that you will have a more accurate approach to the airport's runway. Since the visibility is somewhat poor, I would rely heavily on the ILS to guide my landing. Put the flaps to 5 degrees. Over time, you should extend the flaps as you get closer and closer to the runway. At 1000 feet, you should have max flap settings. Make sure your gears are down. And if your altitude is too high, then you should deploy spoilers to descend. For aircraft without spoilers, make a controlled descent until the horizontal line lines up with the center. When all landing checklists are done correctly, your aircraft should be slowly descending with your nose up a little bit, and your throttle meter should be on or a hair above the red line. If you want to make a course correction, do not overroll or oversteer the plane, as this would cause you to lose control of the plane while you land. Take every correction slowly and do not panic. If at any point you lose control of your plane, you can always go around and try landing again. Idle your engines when your plane's altitude gets to around 30 feet, which the radio altimeter will read out loud. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Once your plane touches down, extend the spoilers, apply full brakes and reverse thrust until your aircraft slows to a safe 40 knots. That was a smooth landing. Some landings can be very rough where crosswinds can be very high and sometimes you have to compensate by pointing your plane towards the wind to be able to touch down. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Leave a like if this content was helpful and don't forget to subscribe. To end this off, I will show you a few other clips of my landings with large haul aircrafts. Try to keep a close eye on the ILS for the second clip. This is Kingfish signing off and I'll see you around. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Five hundred, four hundred, three hundred, two hundred, one hundred, fifty, thirty, twenty, ten. Five hundred, four hundred, three hundred, two hundred.
200. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10, retard. 